Today I'm going to make a cupboard coffee cake. Now, as you may figure from the title there, we're going to try to use things that you normally have around the house, either in the cupboard, as the title would imply, or refrigerator freezer. So I'm not sticking to just things that are storable at room temperature. First thing, I'm going to make a topping. Now, one of the things that I like about this particular recipe is it's fairly flexible, and I'll try and point as we, out as we go through what things you can sub and when you can sub them. I've got a half a cup of brown sugar. This could be light brown, dark brown, but it does need to be brown. Uh, in order to give you the flavors that you want. I've also got a fourth of a cup of uh, melted butter or margarine or a light margarine. Uh, you could even use oil if that's what you had. So you've got, again, a lot of flexibility. Anytime you sub an ingredient, it's going to give you a different taste. That doesn't mean it's not going to work. I also have a fourth of a cup of either old-fashioned oats, or in this case, I'm using pecans. But either one will work. They'll give you that crunch that's often nice when, you're, uh, when you have a topping. Uh, I'm also going to add a fourth of a cup of all-purpose flour, and then a teaspoon of some kind of spice that's associated with sweetness. So I've got a teaspoon of cinnamon, but if you can't go out and get to the store because uh, of a snowstorm or an outbreak of tornadoes or whatever, uh, this is going to work just fine. So a teaspoon of cinnamon or a combination of something like cardamom or nutmeg or allspice, uh, anything that we normally associate with something sweet. Uh, and then last thing that's going in here is a half a teaspoon of salt. Now I'm going to take a spatula of your choice and I'm just going to mush these around uh, and try and uh, get them to combine to the point where they are pretty much all in one piece and we're going to set it aside. The goal here is to make it uh, in big chunks. We don't want it small chunks. So if yours is not coming together like this, uh, try adding a little bit more of the oil or fat, whichever variety you, you used. And this one looks like it's good to go. We can come back and, and pick that one up later. Now, the next step on this is to uh, blend some flour, or excuse me, some granulated sugar uh, with some uh, margarine. So let's go ahead and get that started. Again, this could be any kind of uh, margarine or butter uh, that you have. It could also be uh, an oil. It could be at room temperature. It's not critical that it be at room temperature, however. I'm using a stand mixer. You could use a handheld mixer to do this as well. Uh, but what we have found, or what research has found, not we as in me, uh, is that when you actually start using the, the mixer, the temperature of the ingredients is less critical because they're going to heat up. So um, I've put, uh, let me see how much we've got. Uh, one and a half a cup of granulated sugar and a half a cup of butter or some kind of fat in there. And we're going to bring those in the mixer and let them go and cream for one to two minutes. Now that we have the butter and the sugar creamed together, you could do this while that was happening, but I didn't want to have to talk over it. So I've got one and a half cups of all-purpose flour and then a teaspoon of baking powder, a fourth of a teaspoon of baking soda, because we're going to have some acid in here. We need some extra reactive. Uh, and a half a teaspoon of salt. And I'm just going to whisk those together. Make sure they're well blended so that we get the, the baking, uh, the rising ingredients throughout as much as possible. When I was young, we always had to sift. But somewhere along the line, life became a little bit easier. And now we just have to stir well. OK, this is going to go into uh, our mixture uh, in just a minute. What I want to do at this point is add two eggs to this cr mixture over here. I'm going to drop them in one at a time. It's not critical that they be absolutely one at a time. But you do want to take care uh, that you crack them into a different bowl rather than crack them into the bowl that you're mixing, just in case you find out that one of the eggs is bad or you find out that you're not as good at cracking eggs as you'd hoped you were and you get some shell in there. So once those are fairly well blended, I'm going to slide the other one in. And when, when those are mixed together, we're going to take the dry ingredients that we've uh, gotten mixed together uh, and add that, half of it at a time. And when that's mixed in, we're going to take uh, three, two thirds of a cup of some sort of a dairy product. I'm using sour cream. You could use milk that you have soured. You could use buttermilk. Uh, so you have a lot of options on there. And I've added two teaspoons of vanilla to that. I'm just going to stir it together a little bit. It really doesn't have to be blended well because it's going to get mixed in as, as things go. I just don't want to be too sloppy when I'm moving it from one place to another. 
Now always when you're adding a dry ingredient like flour, because we don't want it everywhere, I'm going to turn the mixer off while I do this. If you're really good at it, you can leave the mixer on low. I've been known to have some experiences, so like that one where I turned it on too quickly. So um, just get that blended in. When that's in, we're going to add all of the liquid ingredient that we made, which in this case was sour cream and vanilla. We're going to blend that in. Okay, then the rest of the dry ingredients are going to go in. We'll see if I can turn the mixer on a little bit more slowly to begin with this time. And get that blended in so that it's all turned into one batter instead of a mix of things. I'm going to scrape down the sides just a little bit because I want to make sure that we have all of the flour in and not just on the outside of the bowl because it will come into the mix as we're transferring it into our baking pan and then we're going to have uh, dry spots in the, in the mixture later. So just blend that again real quick. Okay, that's it for that. Now normally I would clean off the, the batter as well as, or the beater as well as possible. Today we'll leave it a little bit more sloppy and move forward just so uh, we can not have you watching me do something that's not tremendously interesting. And I have an 8 inch square pan, you could use a 9 inch square pan, you can either butter it, put margarine on it to grease it, or you can spray it with a nonstick spray. If you use a plain nonstick spray or you use any of those things I've mentioned before, then it's a good idea to take a little bit of flour and shake it in the pan and sh then shake out the extra just so you get that extra uh, little bit of protection there. Uh, and have that pan ready. The oven's also preheated at 350 degrees. I've got a half a cup of fruit. Today I'm using frozen blueberries. If you're using frozen anything, let it thaw before you add it because it's going to take longer for the batter around that frozen part to cook. Uh, in, a, in a baked product. Uh, you could use fresh blueberries, blackberries, you could cut up apples smallly, you could grate uh, fruit and put that in, but it's about a half a cup of either canned, frozen, and thawed, or uh, you could use raisins, uh, fresh, so the, the choices are wide open here. And then I'm also going to add just a little bit of, I think it's about a half a teaspoon of some kind of a citrus zest. I'm using lemon if you had limes, if you had oranges. It's, again, it's a covered dish, so whatever you have, happen to have around your kitchen is the one that you should use. It's not something where you need to rush out to a store. It's a one, it's a make do kind of thing, make it work uh, type of recipe. Now with the frozen ones, when they're thawed with blueberries, you'll see a little bit of bleeding around it. Uh, if people are, are hungry enough, my feeling is if it tastes good, it's going to be fine. Uh, this is not going to be an entry into the fair, and I'm not going to be judged by Paul Hollywood, so we'll hope for the best here. All right, transfer it into your baking dish that you've prepared. Try and, and spread it out so that the blueberries are as well dispersed as possible, uh, and also that you get all the batter out of the pan. Remember, as far as food safety is concerned, this is not an instance where you get to lick the dish because we do have raw eggs in here and we have raw flour, both of which can cause foodborne illness. So uh, I'm afraid that licking the, the baking battered dishes gone by the wayside of the uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex in, in, in our lives. So uh, spread that out. And now you go back for your topping. Once you get that spread out fairly well, and get the last of that in there. Notice that it's a fairly thick batter. And then we're going to go back to our topping. Now, my favorite way to do this, as long as you've got clean hands, is with fingers. You can use spoons. Make sure that your hands are clean no matter which method you're using. With the 20 seconds of washing. Once you get that dispersed over the top, then it's going to go in the oven. It's going to stay in the oven depending on your oven because they're all calibrated a little bit differently and whatnot, but it'll be somewhere between 45 and, and 55 minutes. And uh, you'll know it's done when you stick a toothpick in the center and it comes out clean. It is a covered coffee cake. It's really good. It takes a little bit of time. It's got a fair number of ingredients, but it's worth the effort. I'm Barbara Brown. Hope you'll try it.
enough to once again be taping at Garden Fest, and it is just really exciting for me to actually have people that are watching me instead of just Kevin. For Oklahoma Gardening, I'm Barbara Brown.